dollars. Now, voters approved this West Seattle light rail extension in 2016. It is still slated to debut, but not till 2032. Reporting live at Alaska Junction tonight, I'm Maddie White. To get in overnight to fix the issue that they haven't really specified in terms of what exactly it is, but Sound Transit says they expect service to be normal on Sunday. In Seattle, Jim Nelson, King 5. Does Sound Transit expects that the overall system wide ridership could double at minimum? In Bellevue, Jim Nelson, King 5 News. This morning, we're talking to the Washington State Patrol about the dangers of driving under the influence. Right now, we're joined by Washington. Spillman and Goins entered not guilty pleas this morning. The third man who was accused said he was too sick to enter a plea today. In Shelton, Drew Mickelson, King 5 News. View Medical Center says a person who was injured out here, a female, is in satisfactory condition. Joyce. I mean, there are so many questions around this, Natalie. The sheriff says that they're going to be investigating this possibly for days. Why is it going to take that long? Well, they tell us that this is a complicated crime scene. Washington State Patrol is being called in to handle the forensic analysis examination at the home and the sheriff's department's major crimes unit. They're going to be taking the lead on this case. They say there's still lots of evidence to gather. Mm -hmm. Joyce. Natalie Swaby in Falls City tonight. Thank you. Valley School District. The district says they are providing counselors and support staff, noting that this incident here is devastating for the entire community. Live in Falls City, Natalie Swaby, King 5 News. So sad. We'll learn more and, of course, pass it on to our viewers. Emerging talent in several creative fields are gathering in Bellevue this weekend. The big event is impacting thousands of kids in schools. The effort is partially led by former King 5 anchor Michelle Lee, who is in there. Mm -hmm. And then he worked extra chores to, to buy the boat back so he could get some money and buy the boat back. And so the moral of this, that story is that uh, Jesus bought us back with his heart and he gave us back to God. Yeah, and what happened in children's story is Pastor George was talking about when he was little, he was a Jesus. Yeah, and for children's story, Pastor George was saying that um, when he was younger, he wanted to be a master guide for Pathfinder and he got cut on his forehead right here. Um, so like when he got cut like from a branch um, and we kind of used that and he was like a really good master guy and we kind of used
Exactly, and the snow continues to fall. Inches and inches of snow continue to pile up. We're in the First Hill neighborhood. We were here. We were also in uh, Chinatown International District, and we were also in Belltown. So this is a main route here to Harborview, which is two blocks behind me here. You can see the road is clear thanks to all the snow plow action. But we're also here at 9th and Cherry. You come over to a side street here, and the streets are not as clear. In fact, they have signs out for a reason. No stops, tow away. On this section of Cherry and 9th, we saw two, three cars stuck at the same time, wheels spinning out. But fortunately, there were good Samaritans out, some of them with shovels, others pushing the cars, helping to position those cars and get them going again. Now, cars stuck here on this road. All over the city also, we saw buses that were stuck. We were on 4th, the main route for buses. We saw a couple of buses stuck at 4th and Battery there. Now, these are buses that are driven by professionals, obviously, buses with chains on them. These are articulated buses, what some would consider to be accordion buses, stuck in the snow. It's a clear reminder that if you can stay home, don't head out. And if you do head out, you may not want to drive. In fact, you may not want to take the bus. You might actually want to walk. We talked to one guy who was stuck on his bus in the International District, and then he decided to walk the 17, 20 minutes or so to get to his job to Belltown. So again, clearly, if you don't have to be out, stay home. And if you do head out, maybe you might want to walk. Yeah, Eric, and he's a prominent member and a veteran member of the Seattle Fire Department, was even named Firefighter of the Year. I'm Andy Finseth. I work at Station 2, Engine 2. Andy Finseth was named Firefighter of the Year in 2018. Well, here in Smoky Point, the snow has stopped falling, but there's at least six inches of snow on the ground here. The big concern in the coming days, those bone chilling temperatures and that wind chill making it feel like it's below zero in some spots. Take the drive off Interstate 5 into Alger. It is easy. Seattle this morning. Yeah, and still getting some light snow here on Queen and plenty of snow covered windshields all around me. We've also seen plenty of businesses shoveling their sidewalks and I got to tell you people we've that have been out here all morning are loving this winter wonderland and you can't blame them. We went into what we ran into one woman walking her dog Mary to enjoy the weather, grab some groceries. She's hoping for even more snow so she and her friends can go sledding. She's anticipating her plans later will get canceled depending on how much snow accumulates and she's also keeping an eye on the roads. I only have a little bit of experience driving in the snow um, so I will be avoiding that. She's not the only one who feels that way. We've seen drivers taking their time this morning, heading down Queen Anne Hill. We know from the past that it's common for cars to lose traction in slick spots like that, where it's too steep for the snow plows. Those plows do get all of the major thoroughfares and emergency routes. Back here on Queen Anne Avenue, the road is slushy and cars don't be seeming to have any trouble right now. For now, live on Queen Anne, Jackie Kent, come on news. All right, that's some good news, Jackie. Thank you. Let's move a little farther north now to Shoreline, where we co host Steve McCarran live. Steve, you've been out there driving around that part of King County since early this morning. How are things faring for you? Oh, the snow is still coming down right now, Kelly. If you woke up this morning, looked out the window and thought, where's the snow? Well, we just have to wait a little bit. Uh, parts of Shoreline, especially the northern parts of Seattle, it has really been coming down for uh, probably the you know what, Molly, even since the top of the newscast, the snow is picking up really intensely. I'm having a hard time even seeing the camera. The visibility is really dropping. The snow is arriving right on time. No restrictions right now with Snoqualmie Pass. Traction tires are advised at Stevens and White Passes, so a heads up there. Roads bare and wet for now, but as snow ramps up in the next couple of hours, conditions are really going to deteriorate. People need to get used to this kind of weather because having a La Nina winter could mean very cold temps and the potential for lots of snow. I love it and I'm ready for it. Bring it on. La Nina is back and she's making her presence known. Snow is already blanketing the ski slopes and forests along Snoqualmie Pass and making a real mess for drivers this weekend. Back it up a little bit and slow down. Well, here in Smoky Point, the snow has stopped falling, but there's at least six inches of snow on the ground here. The big concern in the coming days, those bone chilling temperatures and that wind chill making it feel like it's below zero in some spots. Take the drive off Interstate 5 into Alger. It is easy to see. 
Well, Molly, right now you can see winter is here and it's actually snowing pretty well right now in Seattle. And we know it doesn't take that much to get this city shut down. So everybody is just getting ready for the winter blast. If it's going to snow, let it snow. Seattle is getting ready. Yeah, this is just an awful development that we have to share with you. Three teens and two adults are the victims in the shooting. That's according to the King County Sheriff's Office. We are still waiting on the medical. Yeah, Preston, volunteers with We Heart Seattle came out today to pick up trash and debris at, their, at the encampment, and they're hoping to make a difference in an area that they say has been riddled with violence. While I was at the encampment tonight, I did notice that the few remaining residents, they seem to be packing up their belongings and moving out. I were able to talk to a couple of them. They told me they don't know where they're going to go once this process starts at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Back to you, Hannah Knowles. Come on. Successful in getting federal money in the next budget cycle. A new boat here in Washington State still at least four years away. The state plans to open the bidding process for those boats later this month. On Bainbridge Island, Denise Whitaker, come on. All around. Officials say that they are working on getting more crew members on the ferries, but in the meantime, they say that workers are doing what they can to make sure that everything runs smoothly. For now, reporting in Edmonds, Karina. Right, but those numbers you just gave us really tell the story. Sea Ferries is short so many boats right now, they cannot operate at their full level of service. This is why state lawmakers say they want the governor to declare an emergency. They say it's been done before and it should be done. Church, uh, that'll be this evening. This is a large crime scene with a lot of evidence. Investigators anticipate it will take several days for all of this to be processed. Related buses, what some would consider to be accordion buses, stuck in the snow. It's a clear reminder that if you can stay home, don't head out. And if you do head out, you may not want to drive. In fact, you may not want to take the bus. You might actually want to walk. We talked to one guy who was stuck on his bus in the International District, and then he decided to walk the 17, 20 minutes or so to get to his job to Belltown. So again, Clearly, if you don't have to be out, stay.